Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is DMAC, and today I'm going to do another pin making video. Um, this is one I've been meaning to do for a while, and it's making these little fellas, uh, which are known as rattlesnake pins or floating wafer pins. Um, I think these are available in some locks commercially. I think it's a DOM, is it, that come with these as standard? Um, but I, I use them just in, in challenge locks. Uh, yeah, it can be quite tricky to uh, to pick these ones. It's kind of like a, essentially a spool with uh, some uh, little discs on there, uh, like little wafers, and they, they move about. What that means is if the lock is pinned um, with a load of these, your binding order could change each time you pick it. It could feel different each time you pick it, depending on where these discs are at the particular time that you're that you're picking it. So yeah, good fun to pick, and I find they're good fun to make. So uh, we're going to attempt to make these today. I'll show you my method. There are other methods out there. I think when I came up with this method, uh, I didn't see any other videos on, on YouTube on how to make them, and I just kind of made it up myself, and, and this seems to work for me anyway, and I, I get some good results. So uh, let's get into it and see uh, what we're going to do to start. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a load of these little uh, discs, as you can see there, which will be the, the floating wafers. Uh, on the pin. So what we're going to do to you to uh, cut those is use uh, a pinning set like this. Now I've got security pins in there, I've got key pins. I'm just going to use uh, one of the key pins there, that should do us. And we're going to pop them in the Dremel. I'm going to put the rounded end, because this is a key pin, I'm going to put the rounded end uh, in the Dremel. Uh, let's try that again. Fiddly to do on camera as ever. Right, rounded end in. We'll tighten that one down. And to get the uh, the hole in the middle, I'm going to use this pin vise. This is a 1.5 mil, I believe, and this is a uh, just under a 3 mil pin. Um, these do, I find, they self-center. So I'm going to turn the Dremel on. I'm just going to push. Uh, the pin vise towards the pin and it should self-center and go in. I have found with this one that I think this drill bit's a little bit blunt and sometimes it is a bit problematic self-centering it, but hopefully we'll be okay. I'm also going to lube it with a little bit of oil. Uh, my oil of choice today is vegetable oil because that was in the kitchen cupboard. Uh, you can use massage oil or whatever you happen to have laying around. It's just something to kind of lube this drill bit a bit and, and make this a bit easier. So let's turn the Dremel on and hollow this pin out. <laughs> So as you saw there, um, yeah, we use the uh, the pin vise to go all the way down, hollow them out, and then just to give it a little bit more clearance, I just kind of give it a bit of a wiggle back and forth, just to widen that hole just to, just a little bit. Okay, so now we need to cut those wafers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the pin out of those drawers enough to let me cut off perhaps three wafers from that. And then using a couple of files and some sandpaper, what I'm going to do is on each time we cut, you you cut uh, the, the wafers off, you get like a rough edge of burr. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, this round file um, just to take off the burr on the inside, a flat file just to flatten it off and a little sandpaper to give it a little bit of a smooth. Um, I'm going to be doing this on camera, 
um, as I did before in my other pin making videos. What's going to happen is that I'm going to uh, cut these off and they're going to go flying around my workshop here and I'm not, be able to, I'm not going to be able to find them but I do have some spares here um, so we can use those but ordinarily when I do this I do it down on the bench um, and then perhaps put my finger just over the end um, of the get you in focus uh, my finger over the end of the pin so it doesn't go flying off and I can generally find it on my bench but I'm going to do this up close to the camera so you can see the cutting process but that is going to mean that these uh, wafers will go flying off no doubt but um, that's uh, just something we're going to have to put up with <laughs> As predicted, they did go flying around the place. I did manage to find one there. He didn't go too far, but I'm sure I'll find the others. Another day and I'll have some bonus wafers. Um, so then we've got the end of the pin here. As you can see, that's where the drill kind of popped out the end of it. But this is useful. We will be using this bit as well. Nothing goes to waste. Okay, so if we look at the wafers uh, we've cut, um, that one there, that's the side that we use the file on. And that other side, you can probably see there's a burr on that side. So what we're gonna to need to do very carefully is just use the round file and just give that inside a little bit of a file and then place that rough edge on the file there. Press down and just go back and forth a couple of times. And we're just getting rid of those burrs created by uh, cutting this wafer off. And there we go. Uh, still a little bit of a burr on that one actually. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So we'll put him in the done pile. So as you can see here, um, these are the wafers that I've cut that have got the burrs on it. These wafers at the top here, um, I've already deburred these ones, so we're going to use those ones, and we'll use one of these ends as well in just a sec. So to create the, uh, let's just grab our, uh, there we go. So to create, we've got we've got our floating wafers now and we just need to, uh, the, the, the spool section. There's a couple ways to do this. I've seen people um, create like a, a T-pin, as you would with a pinning pin, and then they put slot the wafers on and then they uh, hammer over the end um, to sort of, uh, you know, create a round on the end that stops those wafers lifting off. I've not had much success with that. Um, so what I use is uh, one of these picture hanging kits. Now in these picture hanging kits, uh, you've got these brass nails here. I think, don't think they are brass nails. I think they're actually steel nails uh, coated in brass. But if we look at that, we've already got uh, one end um, there and we can just slot the wafers onto this. So we're gonna cut this down to size. And to do that, I will just grip it in these mole grips. Now it's not critical at this stage, the length of this, because uh, we're going to do some more modifications later. So I'm just going to cut it off around about there. It's about sort of eight mil or something like that. Oh, thought he got away from us there. 
So there we go, we've cut that one off. And then we can chuck some wafers on. Pretty fiddly thing to do this. You can put as many or as few wafers on as you like. I've done a couple where I've just put two wafers on um, and you get a lot of movement and I think that causes quite a lot more problems. Uh, and some people like to put more on. So let's put, uh, should we go for, we go for three? We'll get three that sort of look roughly the same kind of size. So there we go. All we need to do now is to sort the end out. Um, like I say, you can, um, you know, hammer this bit down and, and flatten it out. Um, but I found another method which I'm going to use for this one. So we'll clear a little bit of space. So we've just held that in the vise there. And I'm going to grab the end uh, that we cut. This was uh, the waste, if you like, from cutting those wafers. And we're going to use that as a cap on the end. If I can get it on. I'm going to zoom you in a bit. So that will just sit as a cap on the end. Uh, and in order to fix that on there, I'm going to use a little bit of super glue. Uh, let's see if I can find my super glue. There it is. We'll just use a tiny little drop, don't have to go overboard. There we go, that is plenty. And we're going to slide this on. Uh, we've got the rounded end there. We want uh, that at, the, at this edge of the pin. Okay. We'll slide him down round about there. And that should give, uh, obviously we've got to be careful not to get the super glue on the floating wafers there. Um, a little bit further. There we go. And I'm going to leave this one to dry because uh, before we do our next stage, obviously he will need to be dry. So let's take him out, pop him over here, and we'll zoom you back out. Now I've got a couple here that I prepared earlier. So this one has been drying, exactly the same makeup uh, with this one. So you've got the nail head there, we've got the floating wafers on there, and we've super glued the end of the pin onto the nail and we've got this rough edge. So what we need to do now is put this one in the Dremel, tidy up this end, um, and then we'll almost be there. Definitely a fiddly job. So you want to get this, got to sort of decide how much of uh, this, sorry, get you in focus, we want to keep. Um, and I'm probably going to cut him off. Let's just have a look. Probably about there, something like that. So we'll cut that bit off and then I'm going to tidy the end up with a file and we'll have a look at what we've got. Right, we're almost there. Let's just have a look, see what we've got. So 
So there we go, there's our rattlesnake pin almost complete. This is the end we've just cut off. Now, as you remember, we've super glued this end. Uh, well, I think what that means is that I wouldn't want to put it in the lock uh, with this facing the key pins. Reason being is as you're putting pressure on the core and turning it, we could break that super glue. Really, it wants to be that way down, and that's the nail head there. Uh, so that one will be touching the key pins, so facing facing downwards. But it does have uh, like a, a rounded head on it, so I'm going to file. They're not filed that flat. I'm going to put that in the Dremel, and we'll just flatten that off. You'll probably see it better there. That round head. There we go. Uh, and that's just going to make it easier to pick. Really, we want that to be flat. So let's flatten him off. pretty good yeah he's nice and flat now yeah. there we go Are you in focus there you go that looks pretty good so that is our rattlesnake pin completed so let's have a look at what we've got here there we go we've got all our floating uh, wafers on there and let's just get this into a core so we can see uh, uh, see how it looks. So I'm going to drop a key pin in. Or try to. There we go. And then so this pin will sit on top like that uh, when it's at rest. And as you can see, um, I think initially we wouldn't get... Um, any sort of uh, full sets on that but if if this wafer here were to lift up we would start to get full sets and as this gets lifted out um, these weight these floating wafers here will bind in the uh, in the spring chamber in the Bible and then we will start getting full sets and all sorts of problems and uh, I have populated a challenge lock uh, just with these I think um, and that one was a real pain in the ass to pick so uh, yeah definitely fun to make and fun to pick as well if you uh, are feeling particularly masochistic and there we go okay well that's my video for today on how I make these excellent rattlesnake pins um, I'll pop a link uh, over here to um, uh, all the tools that I use for challenge lock making you can find out about those and the pin vice and, and, and everything else that I use anyway that, uh, that helps me to make pins like that and uh, various other challenge locks so uh, I think that's all for today uh, thanks for watching and bye for now